Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Hall and I'm a senior at Northwestern. I'm really sorry that I can't be there with you in person tonight. I unfortunately I'm in isolation with COVID, but I'm really happy that I'm still able to share my testimony with you virtually. Uh, so yeah, I'll be sharing my testimony um, called Going Rock Bottom in Jesus. What does it mean to go rock bottom? Society often uses rock bottom to describe the lowest possible low of loss, separation, mistake, doubt, or crisis. It's as if in the worst possible outcome, it's just us, nothing or no one else, in separation from the identity we imagined for ourselves. For those who don't know me, I am from Orange County, California. I grew up in a Christian home, and my parents started to take me and my twin sister and older brother to church and kindergarten. I had a childlike curiosity of God, but I very much believed because my family did. I didn't. I felt like I didn't need convincing. I always had an entire community of Christians around me from elementary school to high school. And in high school, I made my faith my own through a relationship with God after I understood his love and desire to know me personally. But going into college, I also believed false things about my identity. When talking about my freshman year at Northwestern, I've often used rock bottom to describe where I was at. The transition from high school running to collegiate running was a shock. I struggled in classes that used to be a breeze and the over two year high school relationship I had poured all my identity into was crumbling. These indicators I used to mark success and identity were being torn apart. The anxiety was overwhelming. On the morning of December 1st, 2018, I woke up in a bed in the Evanston hospital with an IV strapped to my arm. I was scared and I had no clue where I was. I had gotten so drunk at a team party that when a teammate had tried to take me back to her dorm, the RAs called 911 and an ambulance came. When I woke up in the hospital, I had to call my coach that morning to explain and I never had felt so cast aside, embarrassed, and unworthy. It was rock bottom. On that night before going to the hospital, I had had a stressful day with school, running, and relationships, and before going out, I decided to turn to my Bible for the first time in weeks. This is a true story and gives me like chills to recount it to people, but I was randomly flipping through passages in my Bible and I ended up turning to Psalm 18, which reads, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. He drew me out of deep waters. And who is a rock except our God? I also read through Psalm 26, which part of it reads, Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. I had meditated on these verses that night and in my Bible wrote with the attached date, test me, Lord, I need to make my Lord the ro my rock in college. When I wrote this, I imagined some sort of romantic test of bravery that would make me look so good. I imagined glory and being the hero of my own story. But my heart posture was in the complete wrong place and God answered that prayer that night in a very unexpected way. I was intoxicated with false idols, idols of identity then, who I was as an athlete, student, and friend. And waking in that hospital bed was the opportunity for me to understand how separated I was from the person God says I am. And life moved through seasons for me at Northwestern. There was my freshman year, and then there was finally athletic success my sophomore year as I hit race times I never thought I could. And then there was COVID-19 and being separated from sport. And then when competitions returned in winter 2021, I was injured, had to have surgery on my ankle and was separated from sport and my identity again. It was exhausting, this back and forth of highs and lows. It's also shaky, unreliable, and extremely dependent on faulty promises of this world. But we weren't designed for this. God aches for our hearts the way we ache for successes and the highs. I misused alcohol to cope with failing the identity I created. It was revolutionary when I learned I can never fail at my identity in Christ. When I wrote Test Me Lord in the Bible that night before going to the hospital, I had invited the Holy Spirit into my heart. And now as a senior in my last court of undergrad at Northwestern, I can see how the test really played out. My junior year, I finally tapped into a faith community through Athletes in Action after running away from community because I believed I didn't fit anymore. God placed faith leaders into my life who have challenged me to share my faith and God's love with my friends in ways I was also scared, too scared to do before as well. There's no rock without going rock bottom in Jesus. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his identity. I am empty just as I felt in the hospital without him. I don't openly talk about going to the hospital my freshman year because I thought it was incredibly embarrassing. But now this seemingly rock bottom moment is something I hold close to my heart because it was an opportunity to really see how I was hurting myself, not caring for myself, and that the identity I had built was incredibly weak. 
Just as Psalm 18 promises God will draw us out of deep waters, he drew me out of the lies about myself. Every day I choose to not be separated from God and it is an active decision, not a passive type of love. I choose to humble myself and take on that rock bottom kind of love. Without God, my identity will not stand the exhausting demands of this world. So I return to my first question. What does it mean to go rock bottom? Is there a time in your life that you describe going rock bottom? And do you want to go rock bottom in your faith?